Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install and run a Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi. Without further delay, let's get started. Alright, so in this video, I will be using a Raspberry Pi 3, a third generation, a Model B, which is a 64-bit edition. So you can also try it on the older generations of a Raspberry Pi. So go ahead, check the links in the description and download all the files. First, you need to go to this website, which is the Offensive Security, where you can find the uh, image file for Kali Linux for your Raspberry Pi. So if you scroll down, you're gonna see the Raspberry Foundation. Now you can see all of the uh, download links are available for the uh, different generations of a Raspberry Pi. So mine is a Raspberry Pi 3, which is a Model B, and you can select your generations by clicking on one of the link, and it's gonna be start uh, downloading the file. Once you download all of the files which is required for this installation, and go ahead and place it on your desktop, which is a very convenient for easier navigation. Also, you need to download these two softwares and go ahead and install it on your computer. So this is the uh, file that we downloaded, and if you check the properties of this file, it's around a 1.8 gigahertz, which is a a very small file so now go ahead and right click on that file and then choose extract to so this will gonna be extract the uh, color Linux uh, file so which is an image file it's gonna be around a 7 gig in size and use a win drawer uh, for better uh, extraction so anyway once your extraction is completed go ahead and delete the original file that we no longer needed so now go ahead and connect your micro SD to the computer Open the, uh, as you can see, this is the uh, 7 gig in size, so it is uh, insanely bigger. So and go ahead and open the SD formatter and make sure that you have connected your micro SD to the computer. Then make sure that the drive letter is appropriate that matches your micro SD and choose a format size adjustment is a turned on and name the uh, micro SD whatever you want. So why do we using SD formatter? Because it's going to be a clean all of the bad sectors of your micro SD and it's going to be make a clean and fresh and new file system. So which is a FAT32 file system, it's going to be make a clean and fresh. So I always recommend use an SD formatter in just in case if you have any corrupted micro SDs. Anyway, now go ahead and open the win32 disk imager uh, select your drive letter which is a e drive which is a micro sd mounted path and go ahead and uh, look for the image file that we extracted earlier so select the image file so which is a 7 gigs in size and then select that file and then click on open once you click on open click on write when you click on right though go ahead and click on yes and you can get a warning about that your micro sd will be a crap don't worry it's just a warning and if you face any problems like um uh corrupt i mean if your micro sd gets corrupted or something like that you can always uh, get back your micro sd back to the normal using the sd format or anyway uh, the this process will gonna be a uh, take a long time depending on the writing speed of your micro SD as you can see I'm using a class 10 uh, Sandisk 32 gigs, which is a very faster Anyway, so it's almost uh, completed and now we can see the uh, message like a uh, write successful now It's done. Uh, we have created successfully a bootable micro SD with color Linux. This is the uh, 32 gigabytes a class 10 uh, micro SD uh, from Sandisk. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect all of my um, Required things to the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna connect to the display I'm gonna connect my USB mouse as well as the keyboard to the Raspberry Pi Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a power source to the Raspberry Pi let's see what's going to be happen now all right so when i connect the power source i'm going to go ahead and turn on the power source there we go you can see the uh, both a red light as well as the green light if you don't see a green light and uh, then there's something uh, wrong by creating your bootable drive go ahead and again do this if you see the green on your display or your monitor or tv you're going to see the uh, the color linux will going to be loud so when you first time booting a call Linux and the admin password and admin username will gonna be the username will be the root and the password will gonna be true T O O R. It's a reverse of the root and then click on a login again. I check the description for everything. So okay, now the call Linux has been successfully running on the Raspberry Pi. That's how we can install it, and it's a very very simple. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, and uh, I will see you in my next video. Until then, bye bye now.